Welcome to part three of health assessment. We're going to talk about assessing the integumentary system. We're going to discuss skin and skin conditions more in depth later this semester. So this PowerPoint is an overview of how to assess the skin and what are the normal findings. The integumentary system is comprised of the skin, hair, nails, scalp, sweat, and sebaceous glands. The skin covers the entire body. So when we assess each body system, we look at the skin for each one. So really, this is not a one and done assessment. We do it over and over again until we've assessed the entire body. The skin gives us a great overview of the general health of the person, as well as how well they're caring for themselves. First, we need to ask the patient questions about their skin, and we call this the interview. We ask them about any issues they have that they have had with their skin or anything current that's currently affecting their skin. Anything they've noticed about their skin, um, how they're caring for their skin, and what their nutrition is like. We're going to learn later that nutrition, especially protein, is crucial for good skin. When we assess the integumentary system, we start with inspecting, looking at the general skin color of the body parts. We also want to make sure the color is equal on both sides, meaning both arms are the same color. If they are different, that would be a cue that something is wrong. We also want to inspect for any alterations to the skin, like tattoos, lesions, bruising or bleeding, sun exposure, scars, moles, and hair patterns. We're going to need adequate lighting to fully observe the skin color and any skin changes. And it's also going to let us know how well they're caring for themselves because we'll be able to see if their skin is clean or dirty. Next, we need to palpate the skin, assessing the temperature of the body parts and making sure the temperature is the same on both sides, meaning both hands are equally warm, both feet are equally warm. We also palpate for any moisture on the skin. Your skin should be warm and dry. We also assess skin turgor on the forearm or under the clavicle. Normal skin turgor means that if we gently pinch the skin, it bounces back to its normal flat location. When we assess the nails, we're looking at nail color as it should be similar to the rest of the skin. We also assess capillary refill, which is when we press on the nails, we make the nail bed turn white, and then we see how fast the nail bed returns back to its normal color. The bottom left picture shows what assessing capillary refill looks like. This is actually part of the cardiovascular assessment, but we do it to the nails, so I'm including it in the nail section. We also assess the shape and angles of the nails and the nail bed. The angle of the nail bed and the nail base should be about 160 degrees, so basically flat. If you look at the top left picture, that's what a normal nail looks like. The shape of the nail also matters. The two pictures on the right, right show club nails. The top is Jeremy Renner, who is very well known for having club nails. The bottom is the angle of the nail bed and the club nails. Nails should be smooth and nails should be firm and non-tender. When we assess the hair, know that the hair is basically on every aspect of the body. So we need to assess body parts for the presence of hair where there should be hair and presence of hair where there shouldn't be hair. So we also want to assess the scalp for any lumps or bumps and dryness or lesions. The scalp normally has lumps, meaning it's not totally smooth, but we're looking for anything noticeable, any noticeable lumps or bumps. Normal skin findings would be that the skin color is expected for their ethnicity, skin is clean and warm and dry, and there are no alterations to the skin like cuts or incisions. We call this clean, dry, and intact. Listed on the slide are some common skin alterations. Erythema is redness of the skin caused by dilated blood vessels. Skin that has erythema is often warm to the touch. Ecchymosis is a collection of blood in the subcutaneous tissue from trauma, also known as a bruise. Petechiae are little hemorrhagic spots, like little capillary bleeding, and there are lots of teeny tiny little baby bruises. Cyanosis is a bluish or grayish color to the skin in response to decreased oxygenation. Jaundice is a yellow coloring to the skin and sclera of the eyes caused by increased bilirubin levels in the blood. 
paler or paleness of the skin, mouth, and conjunctiva. This is different than a person just being pale. This is like they are paler than what they should be, and usually this is an oxygenation or a circulation issue. This isn't just like I am a pale person. This is like you are pale, like you don't look good pale. Diaphoresis is excess perspiration. It's basically sweating. Remember, skin is supposed to be dry, and this would be like your skin is moist because they're sweating. Turgor is the elasticity of the skin. If we pinch the skin, it should bounce right back to flat. If it stays in the pinched position, we would say that the skin is tenting or that it has poor skin turgor. Edema is excess fluid in the tissues. And each of these skin changes is caused by something. And a lot of these we're going to talk about in block one over the next 15 weeks. Um, others you're going to learn about during the rest of the program. And this is the end of part three, assessing integumentary.